Hi, my name is Shayna, and I just did this makeup look using my Riviera eyeshadow palette. And I just really got a chance to use this palette, and it is it is gorgeous. Um, I was trying to do a look that would be appropriate for ladies that are over 40, something that you could wear to the office, still be able to wear some color without being over the top. And I think I did a pretty good job of doing that. Of course, I added the lashes and the dramatic eyeliner, which I love to do. But you can do a toned down version of that or just, you know, do a basic mascara and eyeliner routine. You don't have to do the lashes. But I think this is a pretty good look. I hope you like it. I think the video will be easy to follow. And of course, the foundation routine is pretty much the same routine that I do every time I do my foundation. So um, take a look. I hope you enjoy the video. And I really would appreciate it if you would subscribe and stick around for more videos that I will be uploading soon. I hope you have a good day. Bye. The first thing I'm going to be going in with is my two primers. And my favorite primers are um, my Hourglass Mineral Veil. And I always get the big tube of this because I go through so many bottles of it. And I also use the Sun and Park Beauty Filter Cream. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but... Both of, both of these can be found on Sephora. And um, I'm going to start with the cream first. And I like this because not only is it a primer, but it moisturizes. And it has like an iridescent finish to it. And um, so it does add a little bit of glow to my face without being greasy. And I'm just going to massage that in. Next, I'm going to go in with my Hourglass uh, Mineral Veil and um, I always shake it up a little bit before I use it because I notice that it tends to separate. So I, I shake it up and then I apply just about like a pea-sized amount. One thing I do notice about this primer is that number one, um, it leaves a white cast on your skin. If you're dark skin, you're going to really notice it. But I think that's because it has SPF in it and that's why it leaves that kind of that white cast on there. And also number two, it it um it works really really well with that primer that I used before. The first primer, the Sun and Park. So they play really well together. I don't have any balling up or weird things going on when I use them both together. Okay, the next item that I'm going to use or the product I'm going to use is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Foundation. And I use two shades. I use the Chestnut, Rich Chestnut 5C1, and I also use 7N1 Deep Amber. I use both of these and I mix them together because whenever I'm outside during the summertime, I always turn like two different shades. So, um, I like to mix the two to kind of adjust to the tan that I get during the summertime. So, I'm just going to tap that on and use my beauty blender to blend that out. So, as you can see, my skin on my face after applying my foundation pretty much mat matches my neck area. And that's kind of what you want to go for. You don't want to have your skin... Um, so much lighter than your neck or your chest because then people can really notice and tell that you know you're wearing foundation and you're trying to make it look as natural as possible. I'm going to go in with my NARS Creamy Concealer, Radiant Concealer, and the shade that I use is Walnut. And um, usually in the winter time, I use the caramel shade, but because I like I said, I am darker in the summertime, and so I adjust my concealer to um you know a darker shade so that it won't look so stark um uh, on my face it won't look like you know okay that's a little bit too bright and so i'm going to blend that out with my beauty blender and i'll be doing the same thing on the other side all right so i have my concealer place and i'm going to be using my sasha buttercup powder and i'm going to set that concealer that's under my eyes
Next, I am going to use my um, concealer once again to highlight my forehead and to highlight the bridge of my nose and also my chin. Using my beauty blender to blend that out. And I'm going to be using my Sigma Tapered Kabuki brush and um, it's F86. So this is what I'll be using to apply my powder to set that concealer that I, that I just placed. Once again using my Sasha Buttercup powder. I really like this brush because you can use that um, pointed tip to really place the powder where you want it to be and um, it just makes it easier to work with. Next product that I will be using is my Fenty Beauty Matchsticks and this is in the shade Espresso and I will be using this to apply my contour. So usually what I do is I place like a, a line right where I know the shadow would, would normally be and then I blend it out with a beauty blender and I try to keep the product above my cheekbone. I try not to go above my cheekbone because then it starts to lose that sculpted look. Going in on the other side and um, once again blending that out. Using my MAC 1, I think this is 190, I can't remember what this is, but uh, it's one of my favorite brushes. And I'm going to be using my ColourPop bronzer in the shade Color in, I'm sorry, Color, uh, Bits and Pieces. And um, I'll be using that to reinforce my contour and to bronze my face. Next product I'll be using is my MAC Warm Light Definitive, Definitive Sculpt and Shape Powder. And this came out a few years ago and um, I bought it. I think it came out with the collection. And um, I don't use the lighter shade of it, but I do use the dark shade. And um, I will be using that to contour my nose. So this is the shade I'll be using. And I'm just using a Elizabeth Mott I think this is an all over eyeshadow brush, but it came in the Ipsy bag. Um, and I'm going to contour my nose. I don't want this to be too harsh because everybody will be looking like, okay, yeah, she contoured her nose, but you do want to make your, your nose a little bit more defined if that's your thing. Not everybody wants to do it and you don't have to do it, but I like to do it. Using my Urban Decay All Nighter Powder. And this is supposed to be waterproof. I don't know if it's waterproof. I, I, I just don't know. Um, but it is a very good setting powder. And I'll be using this all over to kind of keep everything in place and set everything. So I have my foundation and everything set. So. I'm going to go ahead and use my Sephora waterproof brow pencil and the shade is dark charcoal and I love this brow pencil the only thing I don't like about it is the 
um, eyebrow brush. But it's not a brush. It's like a comb. I don't know if you can see that. But I hate that because it just does not work as good as a spoolie does. So I'm going to be using the other end of my Anastasia Beverly Hills eyebrow uh, spoolie. And this brush is in uh, the number 12. And I'm just going to go ahead and brush my brows. And I'm going to use my pencil to go ahead and outline my eyebrow. And um, I try to follow the shape of my brows as much as possible. And I'm trying to get close so y'all can see um, what I'm doing here. But I use short strokes it's to raining. mimic hairs. It just started raining. And um, I start on the inner part which is probably opposite of what everybody else does. And then I start to sculpt out the tail of my brow. And any mistakes that I make, I can always kind of correct that um, with my concealer. Going in on the other side, and I will say that I am, I do not do my brows first and then my foundation because my eyebrows do not last as long as when I do them after foundation. They end up smudging by the end of the day and um, I just can't stand that. So. I think it's something about the powder that I use to set my foundation that makes the eyebrow pencil last so much longer. Okay, so I have my brows done and I'm going to use my NARS concealer. And this is like a creamer, creamy type concealer, as you can see. And the shade that I use a lot is the caramel shade. And I like this shade to, I like to use that shade underneath my brows. And um, then I'll set it with a vanilla colored eyeshadow. So using an e.l.f. Um, concealer brush. And you can get this at any Walmart for like a dollar. I'm going to pick up this product and apply it underneath my brows to define my brow and to correct any mistakes. It's raining. It just started raining. I'm sorry if I'm all up in y'all face. <laughs> Um, it's like whenever I do my eye um, makeup, I have to like be all up in it in order to make sure I do it right. So, um, just be, um, just know that I'm sorry about the extreme close up here. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and blend out this, uh, concealer so that it won't be like a start, such a drastic stopping, um, beginning between my eye, um, my under eye and my lid. So I'm just gonna blend it out. The palette that I'm going to be using today is my Riviera Anastasia palette. And I've only used this a few times and um, I've been really wanting to get into it. So. I'm going to go ahead and start using this palette and the first shade that I'm going to start off with is this shade right here and it's Palm and I'm going to use that to try to create a um, halo eye. The next product I'm going to use is to prime my eyes and I love the Elizabeth Mott Thank Me Later eyeshadow primer and I got this in an Ipsy bag a few years ago and the sample I ran straight through it. I mean it was a good product and so I decided to go ahead and buy a full size of it and um, I preferred using this over a concealer because it to me it just makes my 
eyeshadow lasts so much longer, which is important for me since I do have oily skin and oily eyelids. It just started raining. Going in with that dark shade I showed you earlier, the palm shade, I'm going to be using the brush that actually came with the, um, well if I can find it, the brush that came with the, um, the palette, it's actually a really good brush. And I'll be using this end to apply that brown shade in my attempt to do a halo eye. And I like to pat this on because it makes the uh, color show up so much better, more intense as opposed to brushing it on. So that's why you see me patting it on. And as you can see, I'm trying to kind of control um, use control as you know to kind of wing out the eyeshadow I and mean, I'm trying not to bring it out too far out but you know still make it look nice and I'm going to go ahead and do the inner corner trying to get as close to the lash line as I can And I need to go ahead and do a transition shade. I'm gonna use a fluffy blending brush and you can use any fluffy blending brush you want. But I'm gonna go in with the shade called Uninterrupted a Matte Eyeshadow by MAC. And they re-released this a few months ago and I decided to pick it up. But it makes a very good transition shade for uh, women of color. So to kind of help me blend out what I just placed, I am going to use that in my eye socket to kind of blend it out and make it a little bit more seamless. And I love this shade. I'm so glad I was able to find this and pick it up because um, I can use it with so many different looks. Whenever you get a palette that doesn't have a transition shade, you can just grab this and um, use this. Whenever you apply your eyeshadow, never skip thoroughly blending out your eyeshadow. I mean, that's like it. That's like the number one thing whenever you apply eyeshadow and it's what makes your eyeshadow look great is if you take the time and blend out everything. Um, you know, if you want to do a complex eyeshadow look but you don't have the time to blend it out, don't even do it because you're going to end up looking crazy unless that's the look you're going for. It just started raining. So I decided to use, because pink is like my favorite color, um, this shade right here, which is called Palermo. And it's a shimmery, I don't know if y'all can see that, a shimmery pink shade. I'm so horrible at this, y'all. So I'm going to be using that shade to do the halo portion of my eye. So what I'm going to use to create that is my ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the shade Medium Dark 32. And I'm going to place this in the middle of my eye to act as a base for that shadow. And I am not great at doing this, y'all. So uh, I'm kind of learning right along with you.
So as you can see, I'm trying to control it with my finger. Um, how I want it to lay on my lid. And I probably should have wiped off this wand a little bit more than what I did. But I didn't, so I'm going to have to kind of blend it out with my fingers. Using my Sigma Blending F25 brush. And this is like a knockoff of the MAC 217, which I do have, but it's it's pretty decent. I'm not a fan of the synthetic bristles, but it works good. And I'm going to use that, that pink shade, Palermo, and I'm going to pat that onto that concealer to kind of make it intense and pigmented. And I probably brought it up a little bit too high, which I can see that now, and I'm gonna try to correct that. This is a Coastal Sense brush, and the number is BRCN02. As you can see, I'm using the brown to kind of define the edges of the pink. And it seems to be blending pretty good. I think I did a pretty good job and job of concealing the mistake that I made. And sometimes you have to figure out ways to correct mis um, mistakes that you make. Um, by adding more color and um, sometimes you don't have to start all over you can just go ahead and use the colors that you have been using to um, correct the mistake using the uninterrupted eyeshadow from Mac I'm going to go, again go in and blend some more just trying to keep this as seamless as possible Also using the palm shade again, I'm going to use my MAC, um, what number is this, 219 pencil brush, and I'm going to use that dark shade, that dark brown shade to kind of define my lower lash line. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with my eyeliner and the eyeliner that I like to use is my MAC Liquid Last Liner and the shade that I use is Point Black and uh, this is not a beginner friendly eyeliner. I'll just tell you that right now. If you're not um, experienced with liquid liners, you may want to start off with a felt tip because they're easier to control. This one, it has a brush and um, I have curly lashes, so it's kind of hard to keep the product from getting on my lashes and ruining the, ruining the whole look. But it's just not a beginner friendly um, liner and it's even hard for me to use it. The only reason why I love it so much is because it lasts through everything. I mean, I can go swim and it's still there. So that's one of the reasons why I like it. And also it's jet black. Um, it doesn't look off black. Now some liners, they, they look dark, when you apply it they look gray this looks black so what I do in order to use it without making a mess is I remove it from the tube but I make sure I brush off one end of the brush wipe off that end so that that end is facing my lashes and the product is on the other end and I use that to apply it onto my lash line so getting up close again and I always start in the middle of my eyelash, not my eyelash, my, my lid, because that's where I want the majority of the product to be. And very carefully placing that product in a straight line.
I love a winged eyeliner, so um, I will always end up doing a winged eyeliner. So what I do is I go ahead and I make my first line and draw that out. And I make the connection. And I know not everybody's into dramatic liners and stuff, so if this is not your thing, you don't have to do this part. You can just do just a basic liner. And um, I think I'm gonna have to go back in with a, another little brush to kind of clean that up, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. And this time I'm starting with the wing first. Using my ColourPop gel eyeliner in black, I'm going to outline my lower lash line. Alright, so I went ahead and placed my lashes, and these are just basic beauty supply lashes that I picked up a few weeks ago. And um, I also use my, um, oh, I can't even think of it. My mascara, I use two mascaras. I use L'Oreal Voluminous Hydrofuge and all of my mascaras are going to be waterproof because my skin is so oily. If I don't use anything that's waterproof, it's gonna smudge. And for my lower lash line, I always use Maybelline Lash Discovery. And I like this um, mascara because the, the, the um, brush is so tiny. And I can really get to the lash, lower lash line and, um, you know, get those little bitty hairs without getting it all over my makeup. So, um, those are the two mascaras that I always use. Every now and then I'll buy something different, but these are the two that I always usually stick to. So I have everything done. I wanted to go ahead and use some blush. So I'm going to use the Fenty Beauty it's actually a bronzer, but it's so red based. I use it as a blush. And I'm going to use Mocha Mommy. And um, I'm not sure why they're saying that this is a bronzer because it is so red. I mean, it's like red. And I use it as a blush. So I'm going to go ahead and push, place that on my cheeks. Blush brush, brush. This is actually a. It doesn't say what type of brush it is, but it's by Beauty Basic, and I think once again I got it out of a beauty box. So I'm using that as my blush, and it kind of really enhances your contour and your bronzer. So I'm going to go in with my Mac. Lip Liner Pro Longwear Lip Pencil in the shade Bittersweet. And I am almost out of this particular pencil, but I did buy backups of this because I know MAC always can discontinue stuff and of course they discontinue the shade. And I find it funny how they always discontinue stuff that, uh, that to me looks great on, on dark skinned people. And this came in my um, Beauty Charm box. It's a matte, matte lip paint and it's galactic. Oh, I didn't get that. I forgot where I got this from. It's Girl, Girl Lactic Beauty. I think I got this at a boutique, but I like the color. It's very pretty. And so I'm just going to go in with this.
using my Urban Decay All Nighter Scented Long Lasting Long Lasting Makeup Setting Spray, and this is Scented Like Cherry. And um, I think I got this at a Sephora sale, and I'm gonna use that to set my face. Okay, this is the finished look. I hope you like it. And um, like I said, some of the items that I use, you can already substitute with what you already have. Or, you know, if some of the things that I did that you don't particularly care for, like the winged eyeliner, you don't have to do that. Um, just tailor your look to how you want it to look. This is just a guide. And um, I hope you enjoyed the look. I hope you stay and subscribe. And I will have more videos coming up soon. I hope you have a good day. Bye.